So they forgot to leave a welcome packet for me, which concerns me a little bit because everything was verbal with this place. I don't like doing that. I should have had them send me an email confirmation. I didn't, but we've driven around and luckily it looks like our site is empty. So I think they left it empty for us. They just forgot the welcome packet. She said this was the wide site. We may have to move to a, uh, a tight site <laughs> Wednesday. So I can't imagine what the tight site's gonna be like. I remember her asking me, um, do you have any slot outs? So. <laughs> If you're if you're placing a reservation and they say, do you have any slide outs? Um, it's probably getting a little bit tight. We made it in. Um, got a few inches to spare. Pretty tight here. We've been watching a uh, a guy with a fifth wheel in front of us. Actually, he's right on my he's right on my class. <laughs> he's been trying to wiggle that thing in here for like 20 minutes. So it's a uh, it's tight here. That's something to consider too. If you got a long rig, I don't envy him. His isn't even. Well, it's maybe 36, 40 feet. I mean, I couldn't imagine having a 43 foot fifth wheel like we had. This is just the second time since we left Tennessee that we found a place with full hookups. So the plan is kind of to recharge, get some clothes washed. Got to fix a few things on the RV. The washer dryer's acting up. Got some stuff with the awnings going on. I'm hoping to get some work done too. They said they had Wi-Fi here. I don't have high expectations for what the Wi-Fi is like, but maybe we can get something out of it. Hensley, you got a whole playground here. What are you going to do? You good to go? Why did we just walk all the way over here? We think we might have a full-time family across from us. We're trying to decide if that's what they are or not. So I forgot to check and see if they had a ladder on the back. If you got a ladder tied to the ladder, that's pretty, pretty definite, I say. Move your arm. One arm. <laughs> so my first project is the washer dryer. There isn't really an error code for this. I checked the manual. All these lights start flashing pretty much when I turn it on. So once you hit the on off button, everything starts flashing. So I contacted Splendid and um, they said, I guess they're being optimistic. Hopefully that there's just a loose connection to the board and that's what's causing that. So we're gonna try that first. But to get to that board, I've gotta take the whole washer dryer unit out, um, take the top off, take the front off. It's an ordeal to get to where I'm hoping there's a loose connection. If there's not a loose connection, it's probably bad. It's probably like the board or something like that, but we're gonna hope it's just a loose connection. This is gonna be the most difficult part of doing the repair. Hensley? I'll go see. No, what, can you go see with mommy? <laughs> Daddy's gonna have lots of loose parts in here. She wants to show you a tree stump. All right, All right let's take it. Take a break and go look at the tree stump. It's big then tree I gotta work. stump. Is it a big tree stump? <laughs> How far away is this tree stump? It's only one tree. Well, there's a few, so it's like a scavenger. Let's hunt. find the closest one. One tree. Hey, Daddy. Hey, Hensley. Show me the big tree stump. Come on. Oh, I'm walking. There it is. Wow, that's cool. Our backyard. So now that's a big one. I don't know why I bother looking for places with playgrounds and pools. So. <laughs> she likes sticks and tree stumps. Tree is her stumps, new yes. Thing. Did you just learn a new Come word? For no tree uh, I gotta get back to the washer dryer. More tree stumps. I gotta fix the washer dryer. You'll be walking around naked. Yeah. There are a ton of RVs here. I'm guessing 300-ish, not counting the ones in the storage, so I bet there's probably like 400 RVs at least. <laughs> okay, we checked out some tree stumps. Back to it. It's a much bigger pain than I thought. 
Ah. Even if I get this thing out of here, good luck getting it back in. Maybe they built the RV around the washer dryer. Look at that dryer vent back there. I finally just leaned it forward. Couldn't figure out any other way to get it toward me at least. The dryer vent is gonna be a pain to hook back up. I don't know how they reach that. Cause my hand won't even go over the dryer and back down to the bag. So I'm just trying to think ahead of how I'm gonna hook this thing back up once I get it apart. So this board is what I hope to be loose right here. I was kind of hoping this cable would be it doesn't look loose at all. I reseated it. So like a lot of stuff in the RV, I don't know why it's doing what it's doing. So I unhooked it, I reseated some stuff, and now all of a sudden it's coming on. I don't know really what I did. That concerns me and I can't get the problem to recreate itself. We'll wash a load and go from there. I've got it half a part to keep an eye on it. The worst part is that dryer vent in the back. I don't know if they've got some guy with super long elastic arms working for Newmar who hooks that thing up, or if they build, if they hook that up and they build a shelf around it, I just do not see how you could hook up that dryer vent with the dryer sitting here. So I've got it placed on the dryer vent. We're not even doing a dry cycle yet. I'm just gonna wash and see how that does and then see what I can figure out on the dryer vent. Oh, there it goes. So I'm gonna open that. You kill the power. Give the power again. Okay. So it's like, okay, I'll work now. Sorry about that. And there it goes. Apparently if you reset the power with the tray open, it'll work. You pull the power with the tray open, plug it back in, let it power up, it's okay. Put the tray in, then you can start it up and run it normally. I, I don't know. Let it run, see what happens. Eat it, come on. <laughs> Here, I'll eat it. <laughs> now, now you gotta eat it. So we're glad to have full hookups. We do like to mix it up. Um, I guess largely because we have the washer dryer is one of the big reasons. And uh, because we haven't followed the weather, it's nice to have both ACs just working without problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of relaxing. This isn't a luxurious resort or anything like that which ironically it has resort in the name. That's usually how they do it. We like to what we call recharge, which means we go somewhere where we have hookups so we can, you know, just get everything back in order, whether it's washing clothes hey. and being able to have everything charged up with, because we've been pretty much, I guess, dry camping here lately, so. Yeah, we have electric every once in a while, but that's been about it. Uh -huh. Here, wipe your mouth. All better. All better. I don't think my phone's had a full charge in a <laughs> days. So we just kind of charge here and there. Come on. No. Just one, one verse. No. Come on. <laughs> Somebody wants to steal the show. <laughs> How am I going to compete with that? The cold never bothered me anyway. <laughs> I have not quite figured out the dryer vent, so it's kind of rigged. We'll see how he holds up. I guess you learn to celebrate the uh, the small wins with RV. You know, we got something with full hookups finally around Denver and Colorado Springs. Well, not right around. We're still like an hour, over an hour outside Denver. So full hookups is full hookups. We'll take it. I mean, the more bells and whistles you got, the more stuff there is to break. That's something we're realizing too. But I don't know, it's like, sometimes it's still worth it to have the bells and whistles. So we gotta figure out the balance of what's comfortable for us. Hensley's ready for some books in bed. So we're gonna wrap up with some books in bed and we'll uh, catch you guys later.